I, I have a specific question about migrants. Moldova, uh, you received many people from Ukraine, especially Kazakhstan and Georgia, uh, from uh, Russia after the announcement of uh, so-called partial mobilization. How did you manage this enormous flow of migrants? How can they be integrated? Do you think they will stay? Will they leave? Are you a country of transit for this migrant or the country where uh, they can, can stay uh, for a longer for a long, uh, time? Uh, can I start with uh, Mr. Dasalia? Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to say that uh, talking about the Ukrainian uh, refugees and then uh, from other countries, uh, I just want to say that Georgia is strongly supporting uh, Ukraine generally, but uh, as one of the dimension of that was the Ukrainian refugees, which are in Georgia, and the government of Georgia is helping uh, uh, these people who are there. It's uh, several tens of thousands, actually, a small amount. Uh, uh, and uh, there is a different programs to support this, including uh, not only physically supporting these people, but for example, in uh, several Georgian schools are operating in Ukrainian now. Uh, for the children uh, who are from this region, uh, from, from who are from Ukraine. Uh, but the uh, major thing what I want to say is that uh, a lot of people, especially this was true in the beginning of the war, uh, who we are in uh, Russia cannot go back to Ukraine, came to Georgia, Ukrainians, I mean. Uh, and we are continuing the support, of course. Now, regarding the uh, uh, um, people from Russia or other, uh, uh, other countries, uh, uh, well, uh, there are several things which is important to uh, mention. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to, so it's important to understand uh, that this uh, Citizens of Russia is uh, one thing, but we have to divide into two different groups. Uh, you know that Russia has significant Georgian diaspora. It's around 800,000, according to the different uh, figures. And the Georgia is just for comparison, 3.7 million. We are talking about the people who lived in 90s. I'm not talking about these traditional diasporas from the different centuries. Uh, um, uh, so, and a lot of them who are coming are uh, Georgians, ethnic Georgians, who are still, who have still have links to Georgia. This is one group. The, the other group is uh, uh, basically who are coming in the other neighboring countries of Georgia later living for this. So ethnic Armenians, ethnic Azerbaijanis, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, so, um, so. Uh, the, there is a significant part which is fleeing the regime on the ground, and there is uh, the other fourth part, which is using Georgia for a transit. Actually, uh, two thirds of the people who are coming from Georgia after two or three weeks are leaving Georgia. So we understand that this uh, could be generally could be feel some uh, risk, but the, uh, there are these arguments are. More, uh, it was more important during the discussion how Georgia have to deal with this issue. Thank you, Vice Minister Darsalia. Uh, Vice Minister Vasilenko. Yes, well, um, when uh, Russian citizens come to Kazakhstan, of course, uh, they come into a country where Russian is also a, an official language, uh, described so in the Constitution, along with the Kazakh language, which is a state language. So. Uh, that is uh, one reason they do not face any uh, challenge in terms of uh, communicating. Secondly, uh, of course, uh, out of the 19 million people in Kazakhstan, three and a half million are ethnic Russians. So that is another reason why uh, the influx of so far about 100,000 ethnic Russians uh, to Kazakhstan has not been that dramatic. Uh, Initially, uh, in September, especially when this uh, partial draft was called, uh, we had uh, about 400,000 coming to Kazakhstan, but for now we believe about 100,000 uh, remain. These are people who, uh, a lot of them, who bring their work with them. They are IT specialists, they 
work online and through the years of the pandemics we all learned that it, it is possible yeah. to work uh, remotely so that's what they do but not all of them are IT specialists so there are other professions and they seek uh, jobs and that creates some pressure on the labor market but it's not huge what I think is important also to underline is that these people, when they come to Kazakhstan, they also get immersed in, in our own uh, culture uh, of living in a, a very diverse ethnically or religiously society the, mm -hmm. that has more than 100 ethnic groups or 17 religions. And uh, oh. that, that is, that is uh, I think, is quite helpful for them to see with their own life, with their own eyes, what life is like in Kazakhstan. Thank you very much. Olga, what about Moldova? I think you are a small country, but uh, in terms of the percentage of migrants, it was just a huge uh, part, uh, especially just after the beginning of the war uh, in Ukraine. Indeed, since the onset of the war, uh, Moldova was called a small country with big heart um, after, after thousands of uh, refugees um, have uh, come to Moldova. So uh, since, since the beginning of the war, about almost 700,000 uh, Ukrainian refugees ha have crossed our borders. Um, at the peak, um, those who stayed represented about 4% of, uh, of our population. Currently, the number is stabilized at around 80,000. Some people have moved on to the European Union. Some people have returned uh, to Ukraine once Russian army left uh, Kyiv. Now, this, of course, uh, has put a lot of strain on our municipal services, on our um, healthcare, on our um, education, on our electricity consumption, uh, for that matter, and obviously the, um, the border management. Thank you.